Hello friends, David Miller, Los Angeles creative, talking to you from my home studio. This is the second in a series of making my very first comic. Now, the first in this series I made a year ago. I was still living in Arizona. I had just kind of gotten started in my comic process. I mean, I had a lot of artwork floating around that I'd been doodling, especially during like periods of isolation. But um, at this point, now that I've moved states, taught a whole year of art in high school, uh, I've actually made the comic and I actually put it out on digital platform at this stage. So I can backtrack and kind of tell you the steps that worked for me and summarize those. Um, it definitely was a long journey. I don't wanna be the person who makes a comic a year. You know, I, I love the art form. I wanted to keep it as part of my art ritual routine, the stuff that I do. And, you know, I aim to have it be a regular part of it where I put out a comic every couple months. Whether or not a lot of people read those things, I don't know, but I mean, looking at the one that came out, I still think it's better than a lot of other people's first comics that I've ever read. I'll go ahead and explain what it is and then I'll backtrack on some of the steps I took there and each one of these videos is gonna cover, you know, specific thing that I did in each comic. So like lettering will get its own video and so on and so forth. The comic ended up being called Atomic Dustbin after Ned's Atomic Dustbin, one of my favorite bands growing up. Ned's Atomic Dustbin got their name from The Goon Show, which is a Monty Python-esque show in England. Never seen it. But um, the reason why I called it Atomic Dustbin is because my comic is an anthology. It's a bunch of little stories. I looked towards like Dan Klaus, other artists of that type that make comics that have a bunch of little stories in them. They're not related stories. They don't have to be fully realistic. They don't have to be fully fictional genre type of stuff. It's just a place for me to put the stories that I'm making right now, you know? Hopefully in the future, I'll have a good enough story that's gonna fill many issues of a comic. Before you get to that point where you can do your epic, you gotta learn how to put words and drawings together and like finish a thing. That's the most important thing at my stage. Words and pictures, finish it. Atomic Dustbin is mostly made of drawings that I did before I had a story. When I started figuring out what stories I wanted to tell, I would be able to do additional drawings that would slot in between what I already had existing. And then I really could see the flow of the story and uh, visually I could see it. And that final stage is where I put letters in. The thing that probably helped me the most to finish it though, and what I wanna talk about in this video is um, engaging in a sense of community and meeting other people who I felt like were maybe a little bit above my level. Certainly as far as art goes, they were above my level, but you know, they've, they've made comics, but I can still interact with them face to face. How that came about was I had been following this Long Beach Ink and Drink. Uh, it's a drawing meetup at a bar in Long Beach. And it's founded by Erwin Papa, but there's a lot of other artists involved. And they'll do jam comics, they'll do their individual comics. When you can see yourself in other people or see your goal in other people that you can approach, then a monumental task becomes doable. It doesn't seem like it's overwhelming. If all I was looking at were the Todd McFarlane's and Jim Lee's and the people I grew up with as sort of like comic idols, you know, uh, Frank Miller. If all I was doing is looking at their work and what they did, how professional it is and the levels of money that they made on it. If all I did was look at that, I'd never get anywhere. It's just impossible to rise to that standard from where I'm currently at without figuring out what all the in-between steps are. And I don't think I'm ever gonna be uh, Jim Lee or Tom McFarlane or any of those guys, you know? I honestly think my art, my main art form is photography. It's always gonna be that way. This other stuff that I do, like music and comics, trying to integrate it more with the photography because I don't wanna have a side attempt at a music career, a side attempt at a photography career. I want it all to be one thing. That's part of like my brand as an artist is that I bring in some of these other methods of design and sounds that I make. The Long Beach Ink and Drink is pretty simple to describe. We've got paper on tables, it's at a bar, people are buying drinks and they're socializing, but they're drawing at the same time. 
you get to see what everybody else is doing. They're not drawing in sketchbooks and you know keeping things to themselves. It's on uh, big public space that you can wander around and comment on people's artwork. You can find out who lives close to you locally. You can you know start following people on social media and be like genuine friends in real life. And you know you're going to see them again because the Ink and Drink is a monthly event. They also have Discord meetups and so on. I haven't participated in any of those yet, but um, Artist Jams on Discord is a pretty cool thing. And when I have more free time, when school ends in about two weeks, I'm gonna make the effort to be part of that. So I can see what other people are doing locally. I can, whatever anybody draws at the Ink and Drink, if it's any good, it's gonna end up on their Instagram feed. And that's followed by people outside of the state. Already, you're getting a little bit of a signal boost in a community because you've joined a smaller community that has a larger reach, if you get where I'm going. And I'll tell you what, if I say to somebody's face, like, I'm working on a comic, my very first one, I really want to get it done, you know, you have any advice, and they give you advice, um, that motivates me to not show up the next month and be like, yeah, I didn't get it done, or I didn't think about it. Like, anything that's like a little battery in the back, anything is helpful and useful. And... Uh, it's also helpful and useful, and I don't mean this any bad way, but to like see what fellow creators are making and see the mistakes and flaws in their work that you don't like, and to like pretty easily be, oh, I like a lot of this stuff. That one little bit is amateurish, therefore I'm gonna make sure that I don't have that flaw in my work. Even Alan Moore, the best comics writer of all time, says it's easier to learn from things you don't like or things that are lower quality than it is to learn from, you know, the greatest works of fiction ever created. A genuinely helpful reaction to a piece of work that you're reading is, Jesus Christ, I could write this Anyways, that's part two of creating my own comic. Uh, when I was in Arizona, I was not part of any comics community. I felt isolated in more ways than one my life there, but since coming to California, it's been really easy, to be honest, to find groups that I can align with, that are sincere, that are talented, that are going places. One, because California has more people, and two, there's more of like a realization that you can have an arts career or that you can be a creator and survive in this city. This is a city that has more people in creative industries than anywhere else in the world, as far as I know. So glad I moved to Los Angeles, glad I got my first comic out, Atomic Dustbin. So stay tuned for future episodes. We're gonna talk about the lettering. We're gonna talk about the formatting and Procreate. We're gonna talk about the brushes, all the fun stuff that goes into the technical side of comics. And then we're also gonna talk about where you can actually release stuff digitally because that was a question that I had to deal with. Thanks for watching, talk to you next time.